This screencast covers the material of Module 3, Lesson 1, where we start working with the addition and subtraction of fractions. In this lesson, we'll explore models for finding equivalent fractions. The first part of this task in modeling equivalent fractions involves making a number line that says use a folded paper strip to mark points 0 and 1 above the number line and 0 halves, 1 halves, and 2 halves below it. If you go to my website, homeworkhelp5.com, all one word, and navigate to Module 3, Lesson 1, you can click on that and you will have uh, a link that will give you a printed number strip, one that you can print out and use for various fractions. I think it'll be more accurate than arbitrarily folding these. I have no way of transposing that on here, so I'm just going to rough this uh, as best I can. So I'm going to put in some uh, points here on this, and I'm going to, above the number line, label this 0, and this will be 1. And 0 is the same as 0 halves, and 2 halves is the same as 1. And below it, we're going to have mark a midpoint. And again, with a strip, you should be able to get very accurate, but I'm, I need to eyeball it here. So I'm just going to label this one half. So that's the first part of the task. You'll have some different fractional values with different denominators on your homework. Let's go to the second part here. It says, draw one vertical line down the middle of each rectangle, creating two parts. Shade the left half of each partition with horizontal lines to show equivalent fractions 2 fourths, 3 sixths, 4 eighths, and 5 tenths. Use multiplication to show the change in units. All right, remember that when we're making a vertical line, we're going to go straight up and down. We're going to try to, as accurately as possible, uh, partition that into two halves. They don't have to be exact. And then it says to shade the left half. So we're going to take it and shade that. And that now represents one half. Now they want us to change that to two-fourths, and we'll use that using a horizontal line. I'll use a red line just for contrast. So now, instead of having two portions, we have one, two, three, four, okay? And two out of four are shaded. The multiplication is done on the bottom. So what did we do? We had one half, and we multiplied each uh, one of these halves by two. So each section is multiplied by two. Uh, so we have one half times two times two equals two fourths. So we have four sections in all, one, two, three, four, okay, and two of them are shaded. So one time becomes two, and my two sections becomes four sections here. Let's do another three-sixths. Again, we'll partition this as accurately as we can. Try to keep a nice straight line. Easier said than done. And we're going to shade that one-half. And now we want to make it into sixths. Well, in order to do that, we're going to have to partition this into six parts using three horizontal lines. All right, so let's start with our problem here. We have one half, and that one half is partitioned into three parts, so equals one times three over two times three for a total of six partitions, and we get three sixths. Moving along to the next one, again, we're going to just do what we've been doing, partition it in half using a vertical line, shading the left half. Now this time we're going to four eighths, so we're going to need we're going to need to make three horizontal lines to partition it into four equal parts. One, two, three. And you now can see that we have four parts that are shaded. We have eight parts in all. So doing the math, one half equals one times 4, representing 
uh, cutting that shaded part into four parts. And now we have two parts the two halves and they've been shaded into four parts so we have two times four equals two uh, excuse me four eighths okay you should be uh, getting a pretty good idea now so again taking vertical line shading to left now we need to partition it into five parts so we're going to use four horizontal lines to do that. One, two, three, four. And I have one half equals one times five over two times five equals five tenths. All right, we'll do a couple more examples here. It's not that hard. Uh, your parents might be puzzling over this, but... Uh, with the practice set that you should have brought home and the resources we have for you online, it should be no big deal. Okay, this one's a little different. We're going to go with three-fourths. So let's start with the number line here. And again, I've got that number strip on homeworkhelp5.com. We're going to uh, change our tool. And we're going to have our zero on the top, and we'll have our one on the top over here. And this would be zero-fourths. And this would be four fourths, and we need to put in three lines in between. We'll put one right in the middle, and one, two, three. And what we've done now is partition this part of the number line into one, two, three, four parts that are roughly equal. Uh, again, if you use those fraction strips, they should be very uh, even, very equal. Now we're going to number these underneath. I have zero fourths, next is one fourth two-fourths, three-fourths, and of course we have four-fourths under the one. Now in order to do this, we're going to have to use three vertical lines to partition it into four parts. One, two, three. All right, now we're going to shade that, and we're going to shade three out of four. And by the way, on the number line, this is the place we're talking about. So, I'm going to use another color for contrast. Alright, so we have three out of four parts shaded. Now we're going to partition it. So I'm going to use my uh, red marker. We're going to make one horizontal line. We now have the fraction three-fourths. And we now have more parts, so it's 3 times 2 over 4 times 2, and we have 6 eighths. If we look at that, we have 8 partitions in all, and 6 of them are shaded. Therefore, 6 eighths is equivalent to 3 fourths. Okay, let's do another. Again, we're going to partition into four parts using three vertical lines. Shading the three-fourths once again. And we, at this point, want to uh, partition it into three parts. Okay, so we have three parts using two horizontal lines. And now we have three-fourths. equals 3 times 3 over 3 times 4 equals 9 over 12. Well, let's see what that does. Yeah, we uh, now have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 parts in all. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 are shaded. So you can see that 3 fourths and 9 twelfths take up the same area of this rectangular model. Next we'll go on to uh, modeling once again. 1, 2, 3, vertical lines, shading 3 of the 4 to represent 3 fourths. And now we are going to partition this into 
four more parts, okay, using three horizontal lines. One, two, three, and we'll do the math. Three fourths equals, and that should be uh, three over four times one, two, three, four, times four, times four equals twelve sixteenths. By the way, I had uh, my uh, numbers reversed here. I should have had that 3 fourths first and the 3 times 3 after that, but no big deal. We got the same answer, commutative property. So I have 12 sixteenths. Let's see what that does with our model. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, I've got one row of 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. I have four rows of 4 for a total of 16. That's my denominator. Of those, I have 12 shaded. Let's look at our columns. I have three columns, and I have four in each column, and three times four is twelve. So three-fourths takes up the same area as twelve-sixteenths. Last but not least, we will now work with uh, tenths. Or not tenths, we'll just partition it five ways. So one, two, three. We'll shade one, two, three, four of those. We're now going to partition it into five parts using four horizontal lines. And now we have three-fourths equals three-fourths times five times five equals fifteen twentieths. And again if we count these we have one, two, three, four uh, columns, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in each column, making 20 parts in all, and of those, 15 are shaded. One more example where we're going to work with a mixed number. Okay, uh, we're going to continue the process and model two equivalent fractions of six-fifths. Now, in order to do six-fifths, that's uh, six-fifths is greater than one whole, so we're going to have to use two of these rectangles for each of these models. So, let's now look at that number line first. I'm going to have zero, and I'm going to have one. So, I have zero-fifths, and I'm going to partition this into five equal parts using four lines. So I have one-fifth, two-fifths, three-fifths, four-fifths, five-fifths. Now you can see that the six-fifths is beyond the one. So I have my six-fifths. All right, so since the denominator is five, we need to partition each of these rectangles into five equal parts. So to do that, we're going to make four horizontal, or four vertical lines, one, two, three, four, all right, and we have to do the same with this one here, one, two, three, four. We're going to have to shade in six in all, so I'm going to start here, and I have five-fifths shaded in. That brings me to this point on the number line, and I need to get to this point here. So I'm going to have to shade in one more fifth. I'm going to have to go to a second rectangle because it's greater than one whole. So we will shade in one of these. I'm do it in black this time. And we could bracket this. We can call it six fifths. Okay, now how can I uh, make two equivalent fractions? Well, I will simply use my horizontal lines once again. So let's do the math and the multiplication. Six fifths equals six times two over five times two, and we get twelve tenths. If we count these out, you'll see indeed that we have divided each one of these holes into ten equal parts, so that's our denominator. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And out of that, okay, we have 12 of these shaded. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's greater than 1 half, 
So I can say that 6 fifths is equivalent to 12 tenths because we've got the same area shaded in. Let's do one more, and we could pick any number of options here. Uh, again, we're going to start by partitioning this into five equal parts using four vertical lines. Doing the same with the next hole because it's more than one hole. We'll shade them in. Again, we need to shade in five fifths in this hole. We need to go over here and shade in one more fifth to make six fifths. I could choose any number of uh, horizontal lines, and I'm going to keep it fairly simple. I'm just going to make one, two, and we have to do the same here. So we had two horizontal lines, now partitioning it into three equal parts going horizontally. So let's see what we have. Let's do the math. I have six fifths equals six times three over six times three, excuse me, five times three. And I multiply. Six times three, I get 18. And five times three is 15. And let's uh, do a little accounting here. I have one, two, three, four, five. In each row, I have three rows of five, and that's 15. Okay, that's my denominator because one hole has 15. And how many do I have shaded? Well, I've got my 15 plus three more, and that's 18 fifteenths. Uh, really quite simple, but it does uh, get you started with the area model. The area model is very powerful for helping you understand fractions and indeed multiplication. So uh, this is not friv uh, frivolous. It's important stuff to learn, and we will be expanding upon this as we start with our adding and subtracting of mixed numbers and indeed going on to apply some of these things to multiplication in Module 4.